Hey guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. This video is going to be a night diving video. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the dive itself here. Uh, had a buddy of mine call me up, said he wanted to go make a night dive, asked if I'd go with him, and asked if I would critique him throughout the dive. So that's pretty much what we're going to do here. If you'll notice right there behind me, there's a very bright light coming from shore. Anytime that you make a night dive, especially off... Uh, say a land-based operation or whatnot, you, you want to make sure you start the dive out knowing a good navigational heading. Uh, something as simple as just a, um, a straight line out, a reciprocal heading coming back to wherever your exit point is. And that light you'll see uh, at the end of your dives as you come towards the exit point, you'll start seeing that light in the distance. So that helps you navigate while underwater. So basically what we're at here, this is the Lake Norman Quarry that we dive at quite a bit. Uh, it's owned and operated by the PDRA, once again, the Piedmont Dive and Rescue Association. Um, we're going to go through this dive. Uh, even though I've already critiqued him and showed him the, the full video, you guys are actually getting to see the edited version. Uh, but I've already critiqued him. We're going to talk a little bit about night diving, uh, possible gear configurations, stuff like that. You're going to see some pretty neat wildlife on this dive. Um, but what is night diving? Okay, night diving is any time that we don't have ambient light from the surface. It could even occur during the day, depending on the visibility. Uh, some people call, call that limited vis. I call it night diving. If you don't have any ambient light from the surface whatsoever, to me, that's night diving. It's important to note that while night diving, you need a good, solid primary light. Um, needs to be strong enough to cut through the darkness. Uh, one thing that you'll notice here, if you look right in the beam of my light, it kind of looks like it's raining or snowing. And that's the actual turbidity. That's what's why it's so difficult for us to see even during the daytime because all those suspended particles in the water. But you need a good light that can cut right through that. Uh, of course, you do want a good backup light as well. Uh, I usually carry two lights with me. One is a primary, one is a backup. On this particular dive, I actually had three lights. Uh, in a future video, I will show you the camera setup that I use to record this dive and most of the dives that we do, or most of the videos that we shoot underwater. I'll show you uh, my primary camera setup and the lights that I have mounted for it as well. One thing that we typically will do also at nighttime is we'll use chemical lights. Um, and we, you know, e either the chemical lights that you can get at uh, Walmart or dive shops. We even get the ones that kids wear as bracelets and necklaces and that way we can wrap them around first stages. We can hook them on BCD rings, stuff like that. Um, they tend to work good. On this particular dive though, however, we chose not to use any chemical lights. And one reason that we did that was for you guys. If you'll notice, the diver right now is about six to seven feet away from me. When he gets to about 10 feet away from me, the only thing that you can really make out is that yellow alternate hose there and he's got a reflective sticker on the bottom of his tank and you can see that reflective sticker. But now the diver's about 12 feet away and you really can't see him at all. Um, one thing that you can do if you ever lose your buddy, of course, is look for that reflective sticker, look for uh, that bright yellow hose or anything, any markings that he's got. Another thing that you can do is look for his bubbles. Um, if you'll notice throughout the dive, every time you'll see a bubble, as it comes up through the light itself, it'll have a very bright ref uh, reflection. Uh, and that, that's a good way to locate your buddy. Here we're actually coming across two other divers that were in the quarry. Uh, they were out doing their night dive. Uh, same thing, they had good strong lights. We were able to see them in a distance, but we couldn't actually pinpoint the diver or uh, pinpoint his silhouette until they were right on top of us. That's actually our quarry manager right there. He's the one that kind of looks after the quarry for us. Here, guys, you've seen this several times. This is the Volkswagen car that we always come across. Uh, cool thing about night diving, and let's talk about that real quick. If you noticed his flashlight, he made a circle with his flashlight in my direction, and then I took my light and I made a uh, circle in his. At night time, it's very difficult sometimes to signal to your buddy if you're okay or ask him questions. So we actually have to use the light to do it itself. And what I was getting at before that, um, at, 
you know, you can dive the same place a hundred times. And the first time you do it at night, it is so much different. Even though that you know what the objects are, you know where their location is, and you've seen it time and time again. A lot of times at night, though, it's it's very difficult um, to keep to keep your navigational heading. And that without a good compass heading or without a line navigation, sometimes it is difficult uh, to know where you're at. So being comfortable, uh, having a good light source and having a good general knowledge of the area that you're diving will help you out a lot. Because things do look a lot different at night than what they do during the daytime. If you also notice here, since I've kind of took over lead on this dive, the diver that's behind me, every now and then he will take his flashlight and just make a circle. And I can see that in my peripheral vision, whether it's underneath me or to one of my sides. And all I've got to do is just kind of take my light, shine it down below me on the bottom, or shine it directly behind me, and just circle to let him know that I'm okay. Now, ideally, you do want to be uh, in a side-by-side -side profile with your buddy. Most time, that, that typically doesn't happen. With the guys that we dive with a lot, we're, we're hardly ever side-by-side. -side. We usually have one diver lead, the other diver will follow. But communication at night is much more difficult than during the daytime, but it's just as important to stay in good communication with your buddy at all times. Here, I've kind of let him take over the lead for me. He's using line navigation. Uh, to get around to where I'm using compass throughout the dive. This here uh, is the swim throughs, which you've seen in a lot of our previous videos. Just wanted to show you a little bit the, the difference of how things look at night compared to how they do during the day. Night diving, other than being dark, needing a little extra equipment, it's really not any different than any other type of diving you're going to be doing. Uh, proper fin techniques, proper buoyancy, proper trim, all that still applies. Proper breathing. Um, nothing really changes from any other dive. We just have a couple extra pieces of equipment with us. All right, during this part of the dive, I've kind of taken over navigation again. Uh, if you notice what I did there, I took my compass, I held it up to the light, I let the light charge the illumination of the compass itself. That way I'm able to navigate. Um, I, I can keep my compass in one hand. I can still operate the camera and my flashlight in the other hand. Um, and I'm not having to constantly turn on stuff and, and multitask quite as much. I just simply take my flashlight, charge up the illumination of the compass, and get my navigational heading, then I'm able to, to go in the direction I need to. Here we're back on another line. Uh, one thing that you'll notice, all these lines, just like you've seen in previous videos, they go to different objects in the water. Here we're making our, uh, we've already reached our turnaround point. We've already made it back to the swim throughs here. And the cool thing about this particular quarry, all these lines have them little tags that you just saw right there. And they kind of tell us what this line leads to. So it helps us out during the line navigational part. Like I said in the very beginning though, having a good navigational heading to begin with, um, we don't always follow the lines. Um, here I'm back to use my compass uh, to get back to the exit point itself. So if you are ever if you ever get lost um, and you don't necessarily want to come up to the surface, let's say you're, you know, let's say you're at depth, you're at 50, 60 some feet, you don't want to have to come up, get a navigational heading. If you get that to begin with and always know where your exit is, 
or what direction your exit is, you should always be able to pick up your compass and go straight to the exit point or whatever your destination is without having to surface and throw off, you know, throw off your dive profile. Here we're back to using line navigation once again. Uh, we're going to come up on one of what we call the shallow boats here. Um, this here actually, this is the uh, another training platform that we got. There's a couple little frogs there. I believe this is the one that's got the rocking horse on it as well, which you've seen in other videos. Kind of reminds me of Sleepy Holly. And the uh, headless horseman there when I when you come up on it from that angle, especially at night time. Believing the next shot that we come across is the Volkswagen bus. Yeah, this is the Volkswagen bus here. This is kind of a um, an anchor point here where there's about four or five lines coming off going in different directions. Here you can see the seat and steering wheel. It's looking through the sunroof part of the bus there. I really like using this quarry to train uh, a lot of my public safety divers in, especially at nighttime. Um, you know, we get a lot of calls for cars off the roadway into the water, and in our local environment, we don't have much visibility at all. So, like I said, even during the daytime, if you're limited on visibility, a lot of time that's night diving also. Um, at least it is in my eyes. So, th this place works good for my public safety guys to come train. Uh, they're able to see structures and objects underwater and, and, and it's going to be pretty close to what they're going to see in our local environment especially with no no visibility here's one of the shallow boats there's some wildlife what we see uh, here in a minute, we're going to come across a checkered or a plaid colored. Actually, to me, it's more camouflage than anything, but it's camouflage colored catfish. In this particular quarry, we, we got a lot of paddlefish. And if you don't know what a paddlefish is, uh, basically it's just a long-billed or a long-nosed catfish. Uh, and at first, that's what we thought this was because, um, you know, it's a regular occurrence to, to see one. But this happened to be just a unique species of catfish that was kind of a desert camo uh, or desert camouflaged color which you'll see here in just a second he was actually asleep we sit here and filmed him for a little bit and then when he woke up and noticed that we was actually there he, he got pretty upset with us there you can see his pattern real good
he's fixing to wake up here in a minute. When he does, he darts off. And a cool little uh, defensive maneuver this fish makes here in a minute. When he wakes up, he shoots down straight below me. And with his with his color pattern, his, I guess you'd call his camouflage, he shoots right down into the mud and just kind of lays there. Um, I get close again, but I have to get right up on him for you to actually see because he kind of buries himself, kind of like a flounder would. It's a pretty cool little defensive mechanism this particular fish uses. There he's just kind of buried in the mud, you can see. And give him just a little tap right there and he takes off. He wasn't too happy with us since we woke him up. And there he swims off. And we're going to fix the end of the dive here. Uh, I think we logged about a 36 minute dive. We hit a depth of about 45 feet. Water temp was around 43 degrees that night. Um, we're still in the kind of the winter months. We're, we're starting to get warmer outside, but the water's still in the winter time temperatures around here. So, and here we finished our dive. And if you notice there, the light behind me, it's the same light we had at the beginning of the dive. Um, like I said, having that good navigational heading to begin with helped us out a lot. We were able to get a reciprocal and always come back to our exit point. So guys, that'll end it for this video. As always, make sure you follow us on Twitter, you like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube, and as always guys, we appreciate your business.